Our boutonniere flowers are as authentic as a silk flower can be, but it's not easy to manufacture fine velvet or silk fabrics that look like Mother Nature created them. In fact, a lot of hard work and know-how is required to create these little lapel-style enhancers. In this video, we show you how Fort Belvedere Boutonniere's flowers are made. In fact, very little has changed ever since they were made a hundred years ago. So, before we start making flowers, we get inspired by nature. For example, when we hike, we can find the little beautiful mountain flowers, or if we go to the desert, or if you just stroll around outside, we find these little flowers that are perfectly sized for our lapels. Of course, we try to produce them as realistically as possible, and all of our boutonnieres are modeled after real flowers. There's never a fantasy product. Once we've settled on a flower style, it's time to choose the materials. Obviously, it all starts with a fabric. In the beginning, we always have a plain white undyed silk or velvet or other material that has the right thickness for that particular flower. We only use plain white because flowers have very delicate color tones and it requires a special hand tying process so they look natural. To ensure the material doesn't move, the length of the fabric used to be fastened to a wooden board. Then we select one of over a hundred thousand metal flower die cuts to get the actual shape of the flower. Traditionally, wooden hammers were used to die cut the little flower shapes. Today we're just slightly more progressive because we use a machine that is more efficient and secure for the workers. In the next step, the fabric die cuts are stacked on top of each other and then colored by hand in exactly the base color the flower has in nature. Since most flowers have multiple colors and often gradients, they must be colored a second or a third time, sometimes just the tips, until the desired color palette is completed. In order to achieve the intricate detail of flowers, including the leaf lanes and certain shades, we use an airbrush. As you can see, up until this point, the flowers are two-dimensional or flat. To achieve a three-dimensional shape and veins, the flowers are put in between a male and female metal mold. With the help of heat and pressure, the flower achieves its natural shape. Of course, different flowers have different molds. For example, here you can see how an edelweiss gets its shape. For some flowers, each petal is shaped like that, and basically the process is exactly like it used to be a hundred years ago. For example, the edges of roses must be carefully dyed and rolled by hand. Obviously, that's a very labor-intensive process. Now it's time for the filaments. To make those, first wooden dividers are added to big reels. Then a yarn is starched and put onto the reel. Once the yarn is dried and starched, it is removed from the reel and cut into pieces, but they remain attached to the wooden bars because of the starch. Depending on the flower, the thread tips are treated with the right colors and powders to make them look as authentic as possible. Once dried, they are removed from the wooden bars and now the yarns look like actual flower filaments that can be utilized in silk flower making. At this point, the flowers are ready to be assembled. The assembly starts with the filaments, which are usually attached to a metal wire, either with glue or a binding glue. Again, this is done the same way today as it used to be. A skilled flower maker knows exactly the right amount of filaments that is needed to create an authentic look. So the filaments are taken, sorted and then bound to the wire and afterwards carefully shaped by hand. On the other hand, the petals of the flower are attached with different techniques. At the end of the day, it all has to look like a real boutonniere. For example, here you can see how poppy petals are attached one by one to the wire with glue. On the other hand, here you can see the fine filaments of the Edelweiss. Five of them are tied together by hand and then glue is added. Now the smaller velvet die cut is added to the stem from the bottom and then the second larger die cut. Voila, that's the Edelweiss boot here. Now for your comparison, an Edelweiss from Mother Nature in the Alps and a Fort Belvedere boutonniere. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Once the head of the flower is completed, it's still just plain wire. We use a 100% green silk thread that is wrapped around the wire and afterwards the wire is bent and it's ready to go through the buttonhole on your lapel. As you can see, now you have a beautiful flower that won't wilt and once you add them to your lapel, it won't take long before you earn the first compliments. Promised. As you can see, 
all of this is made by hand and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes per flower to complete it. However, at Fort Belvedere, we believe that this kind of quality cannot be achieved in any other way and that's why we are committed to it. Are you now ready to earn compliments? You can purchase all of our boutonniere flowers on our website and you won't find these anywhere else in the world. We even offer packages of 3, 6 and 12 flowers that come with free shipping and you can choose exactly what you want and save a bit too. If you're not sure where to start, I suggest you start with an Edelweiss flower because it's very versatile. Uh, the next flower could be a blue corn flower because it also goes well with dark suits, blue suits, navy suits, but also sport coats. As a third flower, I'd suggest you go with a carnation because it goes well for evening wear. If you want something smaller, go with a mini carnation. If you want something larger, go with a life-size carnation. And the color is entirely up to you. A classic would be a red or dark red, but I also like purple, pink, or yellow. Those three flowers are definitely a great start in the world of boutonnieres. I'm sure once you have them and wear them, you'll want to come back for more soon.